everybody. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, for, <laughs> for those of you listening at home, you have a light standing up with my laptop in front of the audience, with my tiny MacBook Air. Uh, okay, so what is this PR environment thing? So I looked it up and. DTAP, and they're going to use that word all the time, development, testing, acceptance, production. It's actually a Wikipedia page for this. Um, they describe the whole process of the program or component is developed on the development system, right? This development environment, but no testing. Once the developer thinks it's ready, they copy it to the test environment. Eventually, it works as expected, then they push it to acceptance, which is where the customer looks at it, says it's good to go, and then they deploy it to production. So this whole concept has its own Wikipedia page, and Typically, if you're running on your own servers, maybe your test environment like, might look like that. Right? <laughs> uh, you know, bash, you made a test folder in your var www file, it's fine. And it's known by Ruby Fairs. Um, but you know, now we have these full things. So Acquia Cloud came out, and like, even Heroku and other systems came out. That's like, OK, we can kind of automate this, make this a little easier. And like, Pantheon has some semblance of this, where you do get your dev tests in line, and now you can have multi-dev with branches and things like that. Um, and you know, we all, as any professional developer says, always do it on dev and then push the test and we're going to production. Um, but really dev kind of ends up being like a bottleneck, right? So when you start to grow your team, maybe you have some people working on the master branch that are coding away, working on a new version of your website. Maybe they haven't pushed for months. You have something critical, you gotta go, uh, go live now. New developer comes in, they don't bother branching, they start working on master too. You can't deploy that code because some of it ends up ready for production, some of it's not. You know, so if everyone's going to dev or master branch, you can get into serious trouble pretty quickly if you're more than one, even if you're just more than one developer, two developers. So instead of that, you want to branch, right? So that's why we use Git branching software development. It's not, it's not linear. Uh, you should branch your code, and now you should also branch your environments too. <laughs> um, yeah, branch your environments too. So what is that's what a PR environment is like. A pull request is the GitHub's term, but it's basically like requesting to merge. You push your branch, and then you tell somebody somewhere that it's ready to merge. So please review it. Uh, and they w made this whole UI around like a social interactive pull request where somebody submits not just the code, they push the code, but then they submit the pull request thing that describes what it's that supposed to do. Um, they, they, it shows their commits right in the UI. You, every time they, they can push new code, it keeps going down in like a linear way. Other developers can come in and comment, not just on the PR, but on each individual line of code. Um, this is a screenshot, but we'll see in a second. They added like a manual review process down here, and even more and more things. So, um, you know, it basically goes like this. Huh? Is some somebody some who hasn't used P PR kind of driven development yet? Everybody, it's already done. So great. <laughs> so you know the thing, you know. You submit a PR, goes, it creates a copy of your site. This is kind of what you need to really get this flowing. So you need a system that creates a whole copy of your site from the branch that the developer chose. It runs some kind of test or deployment. It either, if it fails, the person keeps working, they get pushed, it deploys it again. Eventually the test pass, eventually a human, hopefully, maybe, if you're ready, uh, will review it, say it's good to go, and then you'll merge and release to production. Um, how do you get this? Typically, we all use Jenkins. You can go back like 100 years and find Jenkins blogs, how to, how to, how to write all, all this stuff on Jenkins. It's great. Hudson, before that, yeah. Um, this is actually from Drupal.org. I didn't even realize they have a whole documentation page on using Jenkins. Oh. Connecting Jenkins to Drupal, they labeled what they are, trying to tell you what Jenkins is. Thank you, Drupal.org documentation team. So, you know, a lot of you have seen that. Um, James Sansbury, who's even here. Uh, wrote this script, which came up when I started Googling around for some of the older stuff. It's just a shell script called pull request builder. Yeah. And you put that in your Jenkins, you do a couple more things, they, he's documented it here in the script, it's just a gist. And they used this for a long time at Lullabot um, with their customers like NBC Universal and other major, major, major projects. Um, so this evolved, and this is six years old, this gist. Um, these things evolved. Eventually, they created a kind of a product and get it now called Duck Tugboat. Um, Probo CI is another one from our friends at ZipTech. Uh, pull request environments is like a concept that just we all bent from. You've seen it. Our thing is called DevShop, and we like it because it's open source. Some of the other tools are open source too, and that's great. But this is built in Drupal, and it's PHP, 
And it's, so it's the same language, the same tools you, you know, and you can extend it because it's open source, drop any modules in it you want. This is what it looks like when you first install it. It says start a project. Like I said, we're on Drupal.org. Um, all you need is the name of the project and a Git URL, and it'll clone the code to the server and spin up copies of your site. You can pipe in the database from another place if you already have the site running. Um, but each one of these blocks is basically a copy of your site within the, and you're like, okay, that's live, that's production, this is register, this is name it whatever you want. Um, a lot of the other providers, they're like, oh, you have to call it dev and pass it in line or whatever. We don't care. It's just a text field. Type it in whatever you want. You flag the one that's the live environment. We make it bold, protect it in other ways. Uh, create a new environment button it needs to be simple. So we created a UI. That's the actual button. A uh, little form. You give it a name. The name becomes the subdomain automatically. Choose your branch or tag. You can choose multiple ways to install it by either cloning an existing environment or firing up a new install profile or just leaving it blank. It spins up and you get the UI and you can click the link, you get a list of the URLs of all the different environments you have and, uh, and then you go from there. So the pull request is like, becomes your pipeline because uh, we interact with the API to put all the information you need in the, in the PR. So it's useful to both, well we're just going to use it, we're going to try to <laughs> describe it, but uh, that's the end of the slides, and then we're going to go do some work, right? So I've got a bunch of PRs going. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's working out fine. So does it? Questions at the end or interactive? Singing? Questions at the end? Or no, no, please. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it works just the same with GitLab and whatever. Yeah, any webhook okay. like, will, will work if there's no extra, if we have extra modules for GitHub and Bitbucket now to receive the payload and a million people want GitLab integration. So I can point you at the guy that's getting DevShop locally now to cool. try to work on that module. Nice. But basically, any, any basically a dumb webhook will work. So if yeah. you point GitHub at it, we'll just run GitHub on all the environments. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is fine. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it's nice to be flexible like that, but we do like analyze and figure out, oh, this is a GitHub one, so we put a link, you know, with the GitHub icon right there. So Bitbucket, same thing. Um, and it's all mod just Drupal modules, so it's pretty simple. To that. Yeah, and is the, is all of the CI happening on the server that's hosting DevShop, or is yeah, yeah? There's a master server essentially, what they call uh -huh. it. So that's like the concept of Anchor, the server master, which is the site that's hosting the central site. One of the Drupal sites it hosts is this front end. Yeah. Um, so the queue runs as a user, as the uh, application user on that server, um, by accessing the front end here. Drush command called hosting tasks and it just waits for new tasks to show up in the database and then it kicks off other things. So you can add in remote other remote servers to like say put production on somewhere else. But like what about um, would it is there I might just be missing the, the whole point, but like wouldn't it be nice to use something like circle where like all the hard work and, and all that stuff is happening on a server that's not, you know, mine or you know that I'm not having to pay for that kind of hosting and whatever. Yeah, but essentially, like the site, you can you can do that running yeah. on a circle. Um, but then that's all on your service, and you're you're responsible for the script, the YAML, or whatever, yeah. and all that stuff in circle. Yeah. Like you could even run, put our install SH in there, and do, but it would just take too long. So by having it all on your own server, it's actually very little load at all. It's like yeah. you get a webhook, you just save a task to the database. It's just a node save. Mm -hmm. And then the back end just reads that node and says, what thresh command do I run? And it runs it. So it's usually just git pull, cache clear. Uh -huh. So it's really not a heavy workload at all. Um, and once you start running a lot of tests. Oh, oh, like composer install. And that's all built tests and all right. that stuff. So all, of the, all of the scripts that you normally would need to write in either whether you're using, if you're using Circle or Jenkins or whatever, yeah. that's all built in. Yeah. It's a module. So all the typical stuff you need is already there. Composer okay. install runs automatically if there's a JSON composer file there. Um, cache clearing. And, Registry rebuilds and stuff like that are built in, so you don't have to write your own little deploy scripts. Cool. Um, we do look for like a hook XAML file if you need to want to do extra stuff, but it's yeah. So. Um, all right. So this is the dashboard. This is our our, our live site for um, DevShop.Support. Um, I'm logged in, so this page is actually accessed tonight. But this is the static our little static homepage template. That has very slow JavaScript, um, and there's a bunch of little tasks that I asked my 
friend Jacinto to fix. So we've got like extra HTML down here I want to remove. I asked him to do a bunch of stuff. I can't remember all the things, right? So if I go look at what he did, he submitted a whole bunch of pull requests. Sorry, full screen. All right, so every time he went to GitHub and submitted a new PR, GitHub gave it a number, but he gave it this title. So he typed in remove Facebook icon, add video, add YouTube video. These link directly back to the PR, which shows me like I can see when he pushed it. I can see the files changed, so I can review the code. You just remove this line. I can see the conversation. I can say, oh, it's good or not. But I can also even go in here and edit it. So just to show you the kind of the workflow, I have to show it side by side because it kind of goes by really fast. So if I look at the project, oh yeah, I could log out. Just log in real quick. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at the first one here. Removed Facebook icon. All right, so I can go as the Manager, I'm like, okay, good. Look, it looks like he's done. He submitted the PR. I can go here and click. I, I know the site, so I know what he's talking about. I, I don't want a Facebook icon down here because we don't have a Facebook page. Looks like he removed it. I can confirm it's not on our other homepage. Actually, yeah, that's if I log out of there, it'll log me out of everything. Just to confirm, we yeah, we have a little Facebook icon up there, down there, and I want to get rid of it. So I'm like, okay, that looks good. Um, oh, oh, that's right, that's why I have split screen up. So I go to the Facebook icon, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's pretty good, but there was this one extra piece of markup I wanted to get rid of. I can go in there and I can go to change files. This is actually fun because GitHub's code editor works pretty darn well. Uh, so I can just click edit here. I can scroll down and hit a, hit a, another line that I want to change. Uh, there's these extra commented out things I don't need, so I'm like, go ahead and kill that. When I commit, it's going to it triggers the GitHub webflow, so it'll ping my server and say, hey, there's new commits, go do something. Um, another line, uh, commit directly to this branch, and I can click that, and then we should see ping webhook deploy. So immediately. Triggered that task, it's doing a git pull, backend does a git pull, it has settings pre-configured that says we already know we're going to clear the caches and we're going to queue a test run. So now the test run is queued as a second task, which will run in a second after the verify. I click follow logs. So the hack testing can be pretty tricky because you need to have this YAML config and tell it where your site is, so you have to tell it, boom, it's already done. So you, have, so you have to run Composer install, and the Bahat YAML has to be correct. It has to store the site domain and the drush alias, which changes every site. So maintaining it in codes gets tricky. So we just write it dynamically. You load your existing Bahat YAML, write a new profile so it can ping the site, tells you what command it's running, and this just flies by because it's like just checking for text. It doesn't even click. Yeah, it only even checks one page. So there's not even a second request. So for that purposes, I'm happy with that. I'm going to merge that. PR. Yeah. Review required. So this is cool. They just added a, their manual review feature. Goes directly into. Yeah, I forgot to point that out. This was orange a second ago when the test triggered. It waited. It pings it again. It says you're good to go. There's a deployment API right here. It's hard. I'm very you know. Thank. I much appreciate your patience with the screen. <laughs> but every time you push, GitHub says. And this changes basically. This is my key I use. So sometimes I typically use like DevShop Bot because I didn't actually deploy this. Our, our system did. So this, but the system can tell GitHub where it went. So this is actually a link directly to the site that we just generated from it. So for review, it can't get any easier. You know, you're managing. You want to see it. You click it. You go. You have to remember where it is. You just click. Um, no Facebook icon. Um, this these checks go. The deploy can fail, so if a cache clear fails, for example, this will show you immediately. Um, and then the testing can pass or fail based on your bad tests, and you can click details here 
to go straight to the test results. Make, make, make sure I understand one thing. When you when you clicked and it showed you the page and you said the Facebook icon is missing, that's not on your production. Exactly. Machine. Yeah, that's still that's, on the. That's in this that's, PR. Yeah, the oh. domain was support pr10. Yeah, okay. yeah, so tiny. <laughs> that's it. But yeah. it, it basically generated your, your thing here. Generated that. Yeah. PR, PR environment. Yeah, and actually, let's go to the another use case. So the next PR is to remove footer stuff. Oh, I didn't merge that one yet. So let me. The coolest thing about it, really, is that. Uh, yeah, totally separate. Yeah, separate copy of your site, separate yeah, database. So I can click add my review. I can say review summary looks good, and this is cool because I can actually it gives you options to say comment, approve, or request changes. And so GitHub handles like telling the user, oh, you've got new changes that your boss has offered you. It's all totally free part of their service. So it's really awesome. I can just say looks great. Submit the review. Um, part of the UI turns green. <clears throat> Shit, it's a little slow. It shows my comment. Right. Oh, I must have hit it wrong. Oh, I just did comment. I forgot to click approve. Yeah, approve. Then I click approve. Now they're all green. So manual review, good. Automated review, good. We're good to go. So I click merge. It'll merge the master. And then let's say, let's say. All right, that's great. I want to deploy that really fast. I want that Facebook button gone. Um, I can go in there. Oh, it's actually okay. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is the there. I just deployed it to left. <laughs> <laughs> the tag and the branch are the same commit right now. Cool. So I, I have like it kind of gets stuck in this cycle of like, wait, am I in the tag or am I in the branch? Uh, so, but if I go to my live site, my Facebook icon should be gone. So I'm not worried. Yeah, again, these two are tied, so when I log out of this, it logs me out of the other one. Uh, da, da, da. So, yeah, live is back on master, but let's say, oops, I want to roll back. I really am not ready to put the Facebook. I can just go right back to this tag, go check out 120. Um, it will not roll back your database updates if you have them, so, but it just gives you the power to do whatever. Um, so we'll go back to 1.2, and there, so. See the one two there gives you the try to use the UI to like surface all the info you might need. There's an info button that you can click to tell you how to SSH in, drush, all this stuff. All right, uh, we have more PRs to, to check out. So add logic to callback function. Actually, I want this now because I keep having to like log out and it looks terrible. So um, you can't view our homepage when you're logged in. So I asked them to change some things. He did this. If user is anonymous, print the theme. Otherwise, redirect me somewhere. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, let's see if it works. Okay, so how do I see if this works? So, deploy to. Okay, there's PR8. I can go. Okay, there's my site. Um, I need to log in. I forget what the login link is. Actually, I don't even remember my password. Uh, luckily, we actually give you a login button. So, if I go to the one I want to look for, PR8, add logic to callback function, I can just click this login button, I get a link, and hopefully I get this link, it's like a Drush ULI, but in the browser, and you click it, and boom, I'm in as an admin. So that alone is a great feature for project managers and things like that. Hmm, do I need to flush caches? Did he finish this job? Or No, it's still access to nine. So, I could go in there, I could edit the test, I could, like, let's, let's actually go and do that. This is pretty simple. It's like two lines. Um, so if I go back to the pull request, because maybe he's saying, no, I did fix it. <laughs> I'm like, but I can't, I'm seeing it not work. So how do, I, how do we get to a common understanding of what's working or not? It worked on my machine, right? Uh, so how do we do that? I can go into my, my behat tests very, very easily. Um, I actually have to go to view. It's a little hard to find that if you haven't edited the file yet. So his is add logic page comics branch. If I go to my test folder, which are right here, I can edit my behat test right in GitHub too. It's a very simple one. Okay, so all I want to all I want to do is if I'm logged in, then I should see a page that's not access to that. Given I am now this is like, on GitHub it's a little tricky because it's just, you're guessing what it's supposed to be, but if you use PHPStorm or another tool and you run the Composer install on the behat, it'll actually set up like autocomplete. 
So you can type in like given I and you'll see 10, 20, 30 steps that, you, that are available to you to do all sorts of cool testing. Given I'm logged in as, a, I just have to remember this because I use it a lot. Given I am logged in as a user with the, oh, it's right there. <laughs> I'm just gonna uncomment what I already have. Given I'm logged in with an administrator role and I, I am on the home page, then I should not see access denied, right? Probably a good thing you want your site to do. <laughs> so by just committing those two tests, Let's make sure I'm gonna be able to see it happen real quick. We'll watch the tests go by, change the access from the home page. All right, so I'm gonna here, I'm just gonna commit to the branch, and we'll see what happens. Webhook pings. This one should deploy. Am I the right one? Ah, okay, great. My branch is out of date. So I merged, I merged that release a second ago, and now this branch doesn't have the actual latest code. And so GitHub can, can actually figure that out, and DevShop can figure that out, and warns you, DevShop merge. Branch is out of date, please merge from the default branch. Usually they have like a update branch. I'm not sure what, when they can do that automatically or not. So I'm just gonna do it, have to do that one step manually. But that's okay, I got my shell over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was just it. You gotta switch to... I gotta the, switch to my hotspot to do this one. Or you, yeah, you can't push it. Get over. <laughs> you can just use the HTTPS URL. Oh, yeah, I can, actually. Uh, okay. Yeah, I even turned off my two-factor on GitHub so I could do it. Put my password in. I was struggling with that earlier. Then I switched to my hotspot and everything worked. I was like, oh. mm -hmm. order on a mission impossible will be I know, right? No screen! No internet! What are we gonna do? Okay, get merge. It says using this might not work. Master. Uh, so you love those words, just to bash install message. Yeah, there we go. So, why does it say run it as root? What does that mean? Well, you're not, um, because, the root. yeah, okay. or switch to the root user. We'll do that in a second. <laughs> Actually, I have, some, I have some very specific questions. Great, just that's what some. we're here for. Yep, okay, so look, I pushed, it's doing a merge. It's got an orange one here. Where is my environment? I'm, I'm looking at the wrong one, I think, yeah. Which PR is this? Yep, this is PR8, so I'm just looking at the wrong one, that's why we're not seeing it. Um, PR8, there it is, run test, processing. Orange, 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 come on, green, nope, boom, that's what I wanted to see. Fail test, red, fail test, red. You can tell GitHub to not let anybody merge it. You go into like protected branches, and you can say if these tests are failing, not even an administrator can click merge. So if you get your tests working really well, you get really, really good reliability. Um, but if I click this test result, I can see why. So I scroll through, I can see the output in color. Work, 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 work. Given I'm, so the logging in is an admin word, given I'm on the home page, then I should not see access denied. And look, there it is. The text access denied does appear in the text of this page, but it should not. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad, right? So this is really, you know, you, once you really incorporate this into your work, it's like, if you're doing anything more than just like an informational site and you have buttons, like, you will sleep easier at night, knowing like every time I push that button, my users are going to get something right. You can code as crazy. You make one change over here, you don't expect it to break something over here. Every time you find a bug, just you can just write one or two more lines like that. Click here. I should not see broken text or whatever. It'll save you so much headaches and trouble as you go through life as a web developer. Um, so anyway, you get the idea. I could edit the text, but I want my developer now. I can go in there and say, look, it's still failing. Like, he still has some work to do. And now he's even better off. You actually want to write the test at first. It's, you want failing tests. <laughs> that becomes your goal. Because you're, you want it to actually trigger 
the error that you're looking for. Like reproducing a bug is sometimes the hardest part of the bug, uh, depending on your client relationship and all that stuff. Um, so totally do this first, then I can easily go to Jacinto and say like, there it is, and you can say, oh yeah, 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 I figured out why, and I'll keep pushing code until it turns green, and then like, everyone is happier. And the fun part is, like, every time they push, GitHub not only notifies me, it notifies Slack, which notifies like, my watch, and like, I forgot my watch, but it was so, it was so much fun in the live demo, it would be like, oh, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's all happening, uh, and that's, you know, that's basically how we roll, so, I could go through and like merge all these um, and do all this stuff, but I think you got the gist and I will not let make you squint anymore. <laughs> um, well, the one, one squint I'd like for you to do, can you zoom the, up, the GitHub side there? Yeah, definitely. Just to make sure I'm, I'm clear, those, uh -huh. those two items are were added by your tool, right? Well, this is a, a GitHub system and they have an API that lets you submit as many of these test statuses as you want. Okay. So like a lot of a lot of other systems will have maybe five or ten of these that are doing like here's lint, here's PHP CS, right. here's PHP you know, unit tests. Yeah. So you can actually add a bunch more of these things. Um, we want to do more and add more of these things. But like Probo, for example, has a really great system where like every line, you can make a YAML file and every one of those becomes a line in this. So you can run any test you want. Like okay. in you know, your code snippers or whatever. Um, but yeah, this is all GitHub, I can't take credit for that. Um, but what's cool is it's actually attached to the commit. So like, that's all those statuses are saved and filtered down into this UI where you can see like every test over time. And so I've had PRs that just go for like 100 commits and we're growing the code and the test base at the same time to ensure like some very advanced functionality like privacy or organic groups or something, totally new tests because like, you're trying to prevent content from being visible, it's like crucial. Um, anyway, uh, back to the last of the slides. Um, GetDevShop.com is like the open source page, links to everything else. Uh, the install sh script is on that page. Um, the documentation page is in Gitbook, so it's pretty easy on the eyes. There's probably, there's always little changes and improvements we can make, clearly. So we do have like edit buttons that are pretty easy, so please help contribute in chat. Um, on getdevshop.com is a link to chat. Uh, right now it's on Gitter. We are in the Drupal Slack though, so that's, feel free to ping us in there. Um, uh, so sort of recommended hosting. We love, whatever you love. I love DigitalOcean because it's super fast and it's super cheap. 45 seconds, you get like a big gig VM for like 40 bucks a month. Yeah. It's hard to beat. Um, and their UI is the cleanest. You can set the host name right in there. There's cloud in it you can use to like instantly start with the install script. Cloud in it. Cloud in it is a shared standard that all the cloud providers settle on. It's basically just a text area, text file that you can put into the web UI of DigitalOcean or Amazon, oh. and it just runs whatever's in there as a script. But it also has like a YAML schema. Yeah. So you can do YAML users and SSH keys and basically all these little provisioning things. Nice. You can do cloud in it, same text format for any hosting, Amazon, any of those. So it's it's weird though because in DigitalOcean it's called user data. I think it is called user data for the most part in most systems, but it's exactly you know you don't it's not a prom very highly promoted thing. Okay. Uh, but that's the easiest way to kick off the and well the automated install. Okay. And do you know what's this? What what minimum droplet do you need to sort of make this run? Minimum is two, but four is less yeah. slow. <laughs> yeah. Four is you know, faster, but again, it depends on the size of your site. Yeah. So if it's very little lift, it's just a Drupal site um, itself. So until you fill it up and stuff, it's pretty light for print. Okay. I think I'm running out on like a $10 a month one right now. Yeah. It'll just work on two Yeah. It's just a little slow. Like, but I mean, you're talking a minute instead of 30 seconds for a Drupal standard profile. So yeah. not even probably. Yeah. I haven't fully tested, but usually I usually just go with four, just so the clicks are snappy. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, but it's tested on Travis every time every commit, so um, it certainly works. Uh, <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so op Open Dev Shop, we sometimes refer to it just to refer to the open source package. It's a Drupal distribution plus uh, uh, the Dev Shop repo is like the install script and 
there's Ansible repos and other things. There's a robo file for local development in there. Um, DevShop.support is this new support product we're offering. To, so if you want to go to production and do what, or get development team kind of training and hands-on like guidance, and we'll monitor your things. So if anything goes wrong, we can jump in and make sure it goes right. Just help you use the system. Um, but it's still on your own Mr. your Drupal on your own service. So. Um, that's it for this impromptu tiny screen session. Thank you for your patience. Um, but I think it, it went pretty well. <laughs> so, what, uh, was awesome. Thank you. When would you recommend, uh, like, what sort of things would you say, you know, what this person, company, agency, whatever, should use? Oh. You know, Pantheon or Aquia versus Shopping. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, if there needs to be a I mean, I just say go for it. Like, I'm not targeting what? that smaller market. Like, 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 oh, like, my customer with big organizations with data centers. Oh, so how do I do that? You know what I mean? So I say go to them all the time, like, if it works. Yeah. Or, you know? Right. Like, what would you I say make the, make the jump? Um, you probably don't want to. What would you say? You want to save a bunch of money, not pay extra, like, save a ton of money, basically. <laughs> if you're confident at all, the Linux terminal, like that's all you really need. You don't need to know the DevOps stuff to be comfortable with that. Uh, we try to make it all automatic. Um, but yeah, you should have learned my server. Some sites like one giant site, there are a lot of small sites that can rack up a lot of. You're getting more than you need, really. There's no, there's no physical limit to how many sites you can put on it until you met physical of the disk with your database. It's basically more overload with CPUs with your traffic. So like you can put lots more sites on a two gig server if you really wanted to, and as long as they're small enough, you're not using it a lot. It's just not but that's why we're adding the support as an easy check a box and you get like monitor solutions, so it's more installed on the all that stuff. So it's it's a keep on those things. Um, oh. Which is more like uh, the health of the yeah, system. Yeah, the health of the system. Okay. So not regular ping, so we know. Oh. Then I can actually have start installing or something. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's part of DevShop, or that's so just that's like that's the DevShop support we're building. So okay. it's like basically oh. like a single sign-on portal, oh. and you'll see the list of servers, and we have uptime graphs on there, and um, okay. we're, all the things you are missing when you run on your own server, we're going to offer so people feel comfortable. SLA. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. People feel comfortable going to production. What's the What's your pricing range for that? Or contact us for enterprise. Uh -huh. It could be anything. Okay. Um, I'm thinking 400 for pro. Because again, it's unlimited sites. So yeah, right. a ton of my agencies, my friends are small agencies or shops. Yeah. So like 400 bucks a month, but if you can support 10 of your customers on that yearly recurring income, like we want to partner with, make it affordable. I'm not yeah. setting, we're not locking in prices, but we're promoting some range. You know? But like some of my customers are two grand a month. There's like seven sites. Mm -hmm. um, but for like a nonprofit, I, I'm free to adjust and say, look, you know, yeah, whatever your your budget fits, like you need. So it's basically, yeah, we've got kind of a standard, but the contact us part doesn't always mean go up. Sometimes it means go down, right? Uh, Sometimes sure, our yeah. partnerships might want to be media. like, look, we got a hundred uh, like the Drewtopia team like yeah. is trying to build this easy to launch. Yeah. Drupal system for not like seriously going to the bottom like you need to be the absolute minimum cost because those are the organizations doing the most good in the world at the least amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's kind of the that's one of the benefits. It's, it's, if I if I tell you enough and you're smart enough, you don't think of anything. You run it on your own server for twenty bucks a month or less, or you buy the machine and just put it somewhere. Like. <laughs> But like, any, I mean, I'm saying that like a jest, but the National Democratic Institute's been running Hager servers in third world countries with a suite called Dem Tools, which is like a site for elections, a Drupal site for petitions, a Drupal site for a data portal, all these things that like actual democracies need to become solid democracies without corruption. They're actually doing it by putting it on a server at the bare minimum cost. Hmm. And they don't need a systems admin, they have Hager, they just click upgrade. And so there's, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, please. I've got a bunch of questions. Right? <laughs> right, when, sure. it, when, it, when it's sitting there talking about uh, the installation, it's, they basically say you've been, we test it like nightly on Ubuntu 14. 16 actually. So we got 16 yeah. now, okay. So Yeah, the Docker um, stuff started working again, so 16 is being tested again, yeah. Okay. So it should be working. So, so that's what that's you want PHP 7, use 16. If you want 5, use 14. Okay. The, I haven't have, I've kind of followed the instructions and it said use 14 on there. 
did it, but then we should change it. Because uh, I've seen some in some messages. Yeah, that, yeah, we should update it. Yeah, that probably explains why I'm, I'm having problems right now. Well, which why? Which ones? Well, well, okay. The um, the originally I could have created an open social and it did the oh, install, right. it ran the whole thing, did the whole thing. Then I tried cloning the environment right, and it didn't work. work. Yeah. And I've got to play with it for a bit and yeah. spoke to you guys on Gitter and then yeah. um, other things taken over. Then I realized you were going to be here. I was like, I need to sit down and go for this again. <laughs> Hit clone and it worked. Oh, I'm okay. like, okay. Yeah. Um, I did an upgrade as well and um, I thought, oh, let's update to the latest. Um, oh, well, it mostly works. <laughs> like if I do the dev shop self update, it asks me what version oh, okay. it suggests. So the self update is just for the CLI. Oh, right. Yeah, so, yeah, for the CLI. The, um, but it actually, every time I run DevShop status, it says, this is more than 30 days old. Yeah, I need to remove that. That's a okay. terrible thing. That's Composer. <laughs> Composer does that. Oh, OK. That means I have to release it every 30 days. <laughs> oh, oh, OK. Because it tells me on one version, and there is a new yeah. version, right? Yes. Yeah. That okay. stuff I apologize for. So don't worry about that. Is it? Yeah, no, it's confusing. It's not necessary. Uh, the DevShop CLI can be on 1.x even. It changes very little. It's not even a fully functional CLI. I just use it for the, to make upgrade easier. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that's so it's cool. misleading. Yeah, that that's, that needs to be removed. It wouldn't take much. Um, and uh, I guess the other thing is when I've when yeah, I've run some. I've run some of these and some very specific things. Like I've run I, like just a second ago. What I was talking about. Get. I just pushed. I did a composer update with dependencies to bring the latest one, pushed it up to the GitHub. It deployed it, and what it's done is because I've cloned the dev environment, yep. so it I tried to know. push it to all three. Yep. Right? Is there a way to only go to this and migrate between them, or is there Well, they're on the same branch, so you want them to be all up to date. Yeah, so okay. yeah, yeah. Put them on a different branch. Yeah. So you were saying it's pretty different branches. Yeah. yeah. But I also get. You can turn off, actually, you can disable automatic oh, projects for environment. Well, I can, no, I, mean, I can't remember. Because there's a there's definitely a project settings, um, and it's uh, no, deployment automation. No, it is it right? is a per environment setting. Yeah, click the drop down, go to dev or whatever, one of those. Yeah, okay. And there is a disable automatic. There it is disable deploying command. So oh, okay. That'll stop. Here. Gotcha, gotcha. But you really should deploy in the different branches anyway. So it's not that. Yeah. Um, I was just kind of working through it just to see. What yeah, you know. Hold on, why is the failure happening? So click the That's click a good the question. The other I thing think is, I might know, because the composer has a PHP version thing. Yeah, and it's, it's that thing when you look at this error, it's this, this T function, T string thing, which is a PHP 5, PHP 7 thing. Is that a framework? Yeah. Yeah. So when you run composer update, this is switching to demo Drupal, it looks that your version of PHP is running, you're running the composer update. Yeah. So you have to be cognizant of like, is my local Mac running on 7.1? And you're going to get all these different libraries yeah. than if you're running on a server, which is running 7.0. Uh, so there's ways to pin your Composer JSON file to a maximum PHP version. Composer itself does this. So if you look at the Composer JSON in the Composer project, <laughs> it will have config, platform, PHP. PHP, PHP yep. And there's a maximum PHP version. And so that way, it's what's when you Composer right? update anywhere, it assumes the maximum so PHP level. Right? And then all your libraries are the same, and so that's why if you sometimes. Well, yeah, that's what I think. If you, yeah, if you, I think it's, that's another. I'm using seven one locally. You have to remove Drush, Drush nine, nine also. Yeah. Remove, remove Drush nine from your composer. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're working well, on that one. Uh, okay. Provision is a Drush eight package, so all the commands are Drush eight. Provision actually includes, it doesn't like kick off shell execs, it actually includes Drupal core and like does things. Uh -huh. So if it includes Drupal core and Drush 9 is in the autoloader, there's huge conflicts and you get major right. fatal errors. <laughs> um, yeah. We basically have to rewrite like provision to allow it to work. It kind of stinks. But uh, it'll get there. Any other questions? Okay, I'm here all day, and uh, come see him. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah.